So at InnoVista, our purpose is to identify, equip and develop leaders to change their communities with the hope of Jesus. And over the years, I think we've got really, really good at being able to tell stories and give data around identifying, equipping and developing leaders. But it's been much harder to talk about and, and evidence how, how our leaders that we've trained are then changing their communities with the hope of Jesus. And I know that that's, you know, demonstrating that impact is so critical for us and um, for the people who are doing the training, for the leaders and for you as our supporters and donors. So this webinar we've set up as a way to just share with you um, some of the work that the team's been doing to develop our learning and impact system. So we've got with us, so John Pape is our Trust Relations and Research Manager at InnoVista. We've got Phil with us from IDO, We've got Medina, who is a trainer, uh, well, she's our regional director in Central Asia, and we've got Chris, who's doing some uh, technical support for us. So I hope this, so the webinar, what we hope to do in the next 45 minutes is just quickly overview some of the work that we've been doing. And um, I hope you find it really, really interesting. And I'll hand over to John. Thank you, Mary. Uh, just a quick uh, overview of what we're going to be doing over the next 40 minutes or so. Uh, I'm going to just going to go through some very quick introductions of the organisations we're going to be talking about. Then looking, answering some questions. Why did we uh, set out on this journey to develop a learning and impact system? How will it work? What will it do? And then importantly, the, the so what? What does that mean to you as our supporters? What will it mean for us as a team? with that and then we will end with a Q&A session uh, aiming to have at least 10 minutes available for Q&A at the end. So if I just start uh, by way of uh, introducing organisations, uh, Mary has just introduced uh, in a vista to you. Uh, we focus on training Christian leaders in underreached and under-resourced places uh, in Britain and Ireland and countries that were uh, formerly part of the Soviet Union. Uh, Phil, why don't you tell us a little bit about IDO? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Phil. I'm head of delivery at an organization called IDO Research. Um, and in, in simple vision, IDO exists to help Christian organizations um, become what we call impact evidence and learning focused. So we do a lot of uh, this type of work learning and impact work, evaluation work, theory of change work, if those phrases mean anything to you, um, to help organizations like InnoVista yeah, become more impact focused and improve their social and spiritual impact. Thank you, Phil. And then and the third organization you'll hear us talking about today are Impact Atlas. Uh, that is a real-time case management and monitoring and evaluation platform. What that means is that it will be an Impact Atlas app that our trainers have on their phone or tablet, or it will be the Impact Atlas website that uh, they will be adding data into. Uh, that's the system that will be sending out surveys and questionnaires, uh, and, that, and then that information gathered will be displayed on a, a dashboard within the Impact Atlas system. And in trying to explain this, I, I came up with an analogy based on uh, the movie Star Wars, which hopefully will explain a little bit about all the different people. So in this, InnoVista is a little bit like Luke Skywalker, in that we know that there is more to our work than the stuff that we can immediately see, in a way that Luke knew there was more to life than just drinking blue milk on a desert planet. But we needed help, or we need help, getting out there and stepping into what we think is out there. Ido is a little bit like Obi-Wan Kenobi, in that Phil is wise, he's experienced, he's walked this path before, uh, and he's willing to lead others in that path as well. And Impact Atlas is like Han, Solo, and Chewie, and the Millennium Falcon, in that they have some of their own relevant experience to bring to. And then like the Millennium Falcon, they provide a platform, a means of transport, a means of gathering and transporting uh, 
uh, information for us. So the uh, Impact Atlas are both people and they're a mechanism as well. Um, but thinking about the why then, beyond the organisations involved, why did we uh, need to take this step of starting to develop a learning and impact system? Well, we're passionate about uh, training leaders and leadership teams in underreached and under-resourced places. And we've been doing that for about 20 years. We currently operate in the, the countries that you can see uh, colored in, in orange on this map. And because we recruit local trainers who know their culture and context, then actually we have a fairly good understanding of the situation that needs uh, addressing. And we also understand the people who need supporting, whether that's uh, leaders who want to be supported directly or the communities that they are, are being indirectly supported. We, we've got a good understanding, especially through our local trainers. And we know the outcomes that we need to target if we're to uh, help those uh, people become better and more godly leaders. And fourthly, we actually do have really good information on uh, the activities we're delivering. We get data in from our trainers. They tell us what training they're delivering, how many people are in the room, how many unique leaders we're training each year. We have that information, but we recognize that there was more that we could do to understand what makes our training effective and demonstrate how those activities are contributing to the success of uh, leaders. We knew that um, if we were able to demonstrate these results, that we could increase commitment to our cause. We realized that we would have increased energy from within our Innovista team if we could really grapple and get to know what the deep impact is of what we're doing. We recognize that we could also increase engagement from the leaders we're training. If we have, say, done a workshop with a leadership team, if we can then show them some data of what other people who've done that training have then gone on to do with us, then actually that's going to increase their engagement and make it more likely that leaders will want to walk alongside our trainers for the long term and get more and more training from us. We also realised that with this kind of information, we would get increased interest from leaders who are considering partnership, considering training. So if, for Medi example, Medina meets up with a, uh, a, a senior leader of a church uh, for a coffee and he says, oh, well, well, what's the impact? What if I, why should we bother receiving training from Innovista? Then giving her the tools to be able to set out to that leader, well, actually, we could do this, this and this, and these are the impacts we're likely to see. It's going to help um, create interest from leaders who aren't yet receiving training from us. And fourthly, and also very importantly, we think this will give us increased encouragement from our supporters, whether that's prayerful or financial support, um, potentially volunteers working for us, it can increase and encourage support. So that's why last summer, we set out on this journey to create a learning and impact system uh, with four specific questions in mind. Are our current programmes achieving the outcomes that they set out to? How can we improve our current programmes and the quality of our training? What are the additional training needs of the leaders that we're training? And actually, is there a need for new programmes to be developed, which would help address those needs? And then fourthly, where are the stories that demonstrate the long term impact of our work? And uh, last summer, we approached two organisations um, who could look at what we were already doing and, and basically write out a report setting out how we could answer those questions. How could we develop a system which would answer those questions? Uh, and of those, we chose to work with uh, IDO Research and, and Phil, and um, we've been very blessed by that. And uh, Phil, can I hand over to you to tell us a bit more about the, the how of how the system will work? Absolutely. Um, if we go to the next, next slide, 
I think to to paint a picture of, of the work we've been doing, so we've been partnering with with Innovista now for yeah, no, about eight, 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 nine months now. Um, and we've covered a lot of really good ground. And I think the first thing that we, we've we done in terms of the how um, is one of the key things when, you, when we do this kind of work is, you know, as both Mary and John have said, organizations, including Innovista, they, they have a sense of this is what success looks like. And they've done, you know, Innovista especially have done some really good work tracking, tracking that and capturing that in various ways and data and stories but one thing we we came alongside to do deeper is to almost take that to the next level and say what does that specifically look like what are the specific changes that happen um, at three particular levels one what does what does it look like almost at a behavioral attitudinal level from from Innovista's vision to, to have a, a you know a Christ-like leader, um, a leader who's who's driving holistic mission in in their area and their local area. Um, second level was what does it therefore look like for both their activities, but also what if, if they are a church leader, what would that church be doing differently? What impact again, as Mary re referenced, what impact is that leader having on on the church that they are leading? Um, in terms of, of being a, a church bringing the, the good news of Jesus in a holistic way. And then last but not least, what yes, what does that might that look like uh, in terms of an, an impact on the community around them? What things are that is that church now doing um, in various holistic ways to bring the positive uh, benefit to the community around them? So we, we spend quite a lot of time really looking at those across all the different contexts the Innovista looked at, and I'll show you some examples of, of where we've got to at the moment. But that was a real achievement um, in, in taking us from that, that higher level, um, this, is, this is what Innovista is trying to achieve, to something that is very specific and, and consistently measurable across different leaders, across different contexts, across different churches. Um, so as the first piece, the second piece we then obviously needed to look at is, is Innovista works across a range of different leaders. Um, and so we came up with, you know, lots of conversations with investor trainers and staff across the world. How can we create a typology of different types of these leaders? So therefore we can say um, of, the, of the indicators and the outcomes of, and what success looks like, how can we map those against the different types? Because success will not look identical to every type of leader that investor works with. Um, and then thirdly, yes, we, we obviously would spend a lot of time trying to work out how can we do this across different contexts. Um, I think it's been a very enjoyable challenge for myself and my colleagues who have worked on it um, to try and both really understand and embrace the diversity of the context and the cultures of which Innovista works, and yet find something that will work consistently across all of them. Um, that isn't biased to one culture or another. So that was a big, big question of the how that we spent quite a lot of time trying to work through. And then certainly last but not least, of course, is in, in tracking these, um, these things in, in, in leaders and their churches and their communities, um, trying to add on the extra piece of, of how can in a vista then come along and say, great, it looks like you moved from this place to this place. Can you also add, add, you know, tell us what role we have played in our training and our support? in helping you create that change in yourself or your church, your community. So those are kind of the, the, the four steps we, we spent um, kind of time working through um, in, in terms of the, the kind of how of what we've done. So if you go to the next slide, just as a very specific, um, can give you one example. So this is at the leader level. So the way we do, uh, we do our work is we kind of, first of all, look at in that, obviously at the, the bold orange is the leader level, and then the, the orange there is we, we kind of come up with some high level categories based on the conversation that we've had with the Innovista. And there's about eight of these at the leader level. And this one I've just got on the screen there is Innovista have been very clear that one of the key things what success looks like is that a leader has a team around him or her to support them and share responsibility. And what we decided in, in building this, this, uh, these, these tools and this system is we really wanted to have um, a way for hopefully leaders to be really honest with themselves and honest with Innovista and Innovista trainers. So we kind of, we've developed a system of different scales of people to answer. So in this example, 
you know, the question that ultimately will be asked of, of the leader initially is, you know, which of these describes how leadership works in your organization? Um, I won't read all four of them out there, but you can see there's a range of different options, kind of really where Innovista would love in the long term to support that leader to get to, versus things at the bottom, which are very open and transparent, saying in, in certain cultures and contexts anyway, there's a lot of leadership that is held by the individual and, and all the responsibility is held there. Um, so that's kind of an example of what some of these questions and these measures are going to start to look like. Um, at this stage, I'm going to invite Medina in to have a kind of a short conversation with me. I've worked a lot with Medina. I've been very privileged to hear her vision and her heart for what she, for what she does in Central Asia. So uh, Medina, I just have two, two questions for you, um, for you to share with the group. First of all, Medina, can you just tell, how have you found the process of, of creating these questions, um, you know, with, with me and my team over the last six months or so. I think you're on mute, Medina. You're on mute. Huh. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to this uh, webinar. Yeah, process was very interesting because uh, we were all of, from different countries. And of course, we had a lot of different challenges which our leaders are suffering or going through. And I was really worrying for Phil, how he will collect all of this and then he sort out because do you remember, Phil, it was a lot of questions yeah, in the beginning, and then Phil was giving us back, and I was coming to our uh, Central Asian team, and I, I was going, okay, let's put uh, the mark, which is like high percentages, let's put, and so we were sorting out like two, three months, going back, and but our team also enjoyed, because the... Um, the questions was very good, but we were sorting out the best, best, best. And I think that we came for the best of best questions, yeah? So I enjoyed and all, all our team enjoyed also. Thank, thank you, Medina. Um, and what, thinking almost about how this, that using this system is, might change how you and your team support leaders, What's your thinking at the moment around that? Uh, you know, uh, before when we have done, like uh, usually we came to leader and we were talking with him. So uh, finding out his struggles and challenges. And then from this, we started giving he, uh, him support and uh, workshops. Yeah. But with this uh, creation, idol creation, what I like that this is all recorded and written. And we are hanging this uh, to leader who can himself to read, go through all this question plus with answers. He can choose for himself where is he so he can see himself in the mirror. Where is he? And we already tested in leaders and they really said that the, the questions are very good specific and giving really deep thoughts like where I am and you can see without even in the vista where are you and then we are saying okay we can help you we can support you because we have this 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 workshops we have coaching so and then at the end of the journey uh, we can see like because it's written here yeah, recorded and then at the end of the journey we can see how leader grown or how leader changed in the area of uh, maybe struggling or missing. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Is there anything else you would like to share with the room about, about this work before I move on? So, of course, I, I want to say that, uh, thank you so much, Phil. It was really good work, hard work, really hard work. It's eight months. And we were all the time, and uh, you really was all the time on that uh, Zoom all the time saying like, I'm here, I can help you if you have some questions. So thank you so much. It was good partnering, partnership, yeah. So um, I wanna say to, uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Medina. I wasn't teeing you up for that, but I'll, I'll take it, thank you. Um, so thank you, Medina. So let me just show you uh, the room, a couple more examples um, 
of, of what it is to look at at the, at the other levels. So here's an example. Um, I think I picked this one on purpose. So this is the, the church level and, and how leaders are there for both as teams, hopefully, but maybe as individuals initially, how they are working with their church to help those churches become more missional, become more in holistic mission. Uh, and the key theme that came out quite early on of Christians being actively discipled by those churches. Um, and this is a good example of where we were very keen to build on Innovista's strengths already. So the options on the screen there are things Innovista had already come up with um, in terms of things they support and train leaders to do. So we were using this to, to build what Innovista had already achieved um, in these areas to, to build this into the system we're creating. So, so those are six ways from Innovista's perspective that, that disciples can be built intentionally within, within the church. And in the third level, um, again, at the community level, um, one of the key behaviors we came up with as, as a group is that the church is in, what they want them to do is to increase in their intentional activities to deliver holistic mission. And again, what we've done here, for example, um, is again build on, on really good practice. So some of you may be aware of, of a big Christian development organization um, called Tear Fund. Um, they have a particular definition of, of um, community well-being, and we borrow some of their good practice to come up with it, just almost a sphere of areas of, of the health of a community um, that churches can record for Innovistas um, understanding how individuals helping that church do more things um, which again will hopefully see that oh isn't it interesting that mm, churches are doing a lot around physical health but actually at the moment they're not you know doing new things around government engagement for example so that's kind of information that's certainly going to help innovators to, to say that's something they would want to encourage more of um, as, as an example so if you go to the next slide um, oh yes, this is the final one. So the, the way the system will also work is then uh, having asked these questions and I'll show you briefly in the moment how and when the plan is to ask them, it kind of then reverts back to that higher level uh, and, and helps that person reflect in, in the time period of which, you know, since we, we last worked with you, which it says six months there, but it may be longer. Um, you know, in these six areas, um, which of these has Innovista really helped you grow in? So it's not going through all of them again in, in an onerous way, but actually it's giving an investor the evidence of the journey of the leader and then alongside that being able to see it. And we've had the most impact on these particular areas. So lastly, um, just briefly to give you a, a high level overview, I'm not going to say too much, so you're welcome to ask questions. And this is where Impact Atlas, who is the, they're a technology partner, um, just one extra thing which might be interesting for, for you. Some of you may know uh, American um, organization called Praxis who help kind of Christian businesses flourish and Impact Atlas are, are a member of that organization. So we really like them. They're very, very well respected and doing some fantastic things. But in terms of the what and when of, of linking up with their platform, there were three key things that we really thought about in terms of, of you know, linking in a Vista and, and who they are independently to, to the Impact Atlas platform. And the first one is very much thinking through when would information need to be collected to be useful for the, for the trainers? Um, so this didn't feel like an extraction exercise simply um, for, for the central Innovista understanding, but actually is a system that really helps the, the individual Innovista trainers do their, do their job better and have more impact on the leaders. The second one, again, what, what, how can we collect this in a way that is consistent across the cultures and contexts without being too detailed? and therefore not fit certain contexts. And then lastly, I think I've been really impressed and, and um, encouraged by Innovista's real desire for a very relational and long-term and individualized approach with each leader. So therefore, how can the data collection support that rather than actually inhibit that and make that actually diminished? So on the next screen, just really briefly, almost thinking about it from the perspective of a leader, how it will work is they will initially work a trainer will, will, will record that new leader, put some demographic information on their system. There, will, for when it's relevant, fill in those questions we've also been talking about in terms of where are you now? How can we help you? Which of these areas would you like us to prioritize? Then, obviously, over time, as Innovista delivers training and coaching and support, um, the, the, the Innovista trainers will be recording that information against each individual leader as well as obviously the teams when they're working with the teams. 
And then obviously alongside that, there's kind of three types we're talking about. Um, one, maybe after sort of a six month uh, time period capturing that change. And then again, potentially after a one year time period. Um, but then within the system there, there's that flexibility also to have shorter, smaller surveys. Um, for example, if they've just completed it in a VISTA set training course, then rather than wait six months to have any data whatsoever, that a survey can be sent just asking about that particular training course that was completed to get that initial kind of quicker learning feedback. So that's kind of the overall flow. And I think we hopefully that's going to embed over time whilst giving some flexibility for that individualized approach um, rather than one size fits all. Excellent. Thank you so much, Phil, for explaining that to us and uh, helping us to, uh, to understand uh, the work that's being done. Uh, so then to, to kind of wrap up, the, then answering that, so what question, uh, what does this mean uh, for an Avista and what will it mean for donors? Um, with all this information that we'll be gathering, we'll be able to monitor the effectiveness of individual training inputs and then evaluate if altogether that's creating the desired impact uh, on the ground. And uh, basically, are we actually identifying, equipping and developing leaders to change their communities with the hope of Jesus? We say that's our purpose. Are we actually achieving that? Um, and what this uh, means uh, also is that are there new programs we need to develop as well? Are there unmet training needs? And as we improve our ability uh, to rep report as well, then that hopefully will draw supporters in to uh, increase prayer and uh, funding for our work. So what this directly means for our support is that over time, we'll have a better understanding of the leaders and communities that you're supporting. Hopefully it will give you a better understanding of what needs the leaders have and we'll be able to articulate that in, in our uh, funding, in our communications, in our impact updates to let you know, give you a better understanding of what needs and problems leaders face. We'll also have increased clarity about the starting point that those churches and ministries are at when they start receiving InnoVista training. For our supporters, whether that's in prayer or in finance, they want us to take a leader or a team of leaders on a journey from X to Y. And this will help us know what X looks like to then take them on that journey to Y of more servant hearted leadership, more holistic mission and more people coming to know Jesus. Also, um, give us comprehensive data on the training leaders are getting from our teams. So as I said at the beginning, we're very good at capturing data of what training is being delivered by our trainers, uh, where it was, uh, how many people were in the room, what specific training they were delivering. This will help us improve that in tracking of individual leaders and the inputs they get over time. So a typical journey for a leader might be that they come to one of our conferences, they then, um, take part in a, a, a one-off workshop then they may be going to a, a longer term training course and that relationship then continues through mentoring or coaching um, this system will help us track those how much training and input an individual leader is getting or a team uh, so we can get a better picture of what that impact is over time we also have a fuller picture of the effects uh, our training has on leaders, churches and ministries. And absolutely, we want to share that with our supporters. And hopefully you will then see that picture in its fullness. And also, hopefully you'll get insight into the impact that this is having in the community. This will uh, this system will help us know where to go to find the stories. We're all, we want to be sharing data and stories of the impact. And by uh, following the, the kind of the data we're gathering through Impact Atlas, we can then go and, and understand the full story. We can go uh, ask leaders, ask people in the community to tell us about what's happened over the, the last period of time. We can find, take photographs, we can do video interviews, and then we can share that in all its fullness with our supporters. So we're confident that as we use and continue developing our learning and impact system, 
on Impact Atlas, that it will make Innovista International and our national ministries uh, stand out in the field of leadership, training and development. And we're so grateful for our supporters uh, being with us on this journey uh, as we look to impact those leaders to do good things. So at this point, I'd uh, invite you, if you have any uh, questions, then uh, please uh, unmute and uh, share a question. Um, you can see uh, Ruth has uh, put a question in the chat already about uh, languages that we're rolling out in. Uh, the initial rollout will be in um, English and Russian. Um, covering that covers um, to an extent covers the whole spectrum of where we're working but we very quickly want to uh, add uh, three more languages to that which is um, Ukrainian, uh, Uzbek and Romanian. Um, Ukrainian for uh, obvious reasons that uh, more and more people in Ukraine would rather speak uh, use specifically Ukrainian rather than Russian, and we want to support them in that. Uh, Romanian for our work in Moldova, where uh, a large proportion of the leaders we work with have Romanian as their heart language, and then also um, Uzbek. In fact, Medina, do you want to speak into that, um, the question of languages and how you will navigate that in your context? Yeah, I think uh, if we will have uh, um... So I, I, I think that we can translate into Karakalpak language. I think we can translate in Tajik language, yeah. But uh, overall, Central Asian team right now knows, everyone knows Russian, so, and we are translating to leaders. We are sitting with, if it's uh, local, so we, everyone translating into own language. So, yeah. Thank you, Medina. And the Impact Atlas um, platform, it then it can cope with multiple languages as well. So as we set up a user, as we say what country they're in, it will set up a default language. So when they see sign in, they're seeing the word sign in in their own language. They're seeing the word log out in their own language. Um, the Impact Atlas take care of that aspect of the, the system being in the right languages. And we're responsible for making sure then that our surveys are in the right languages. Um, to make them accessible to as many people as possible. Let me just um, bring us all back together. Um, question from Paul, does this give you the option for longer term data collection beyond 12 months? Uh, Phil, would you like to, to speak to that? Yeah, it's a very good question. I what The first thing I'd say to it is, one of the reasons we really enjoy partnering with Impact Atlas is they their their primary heart is to have organizations increase their impact. So obviously there's a lot of data collection that happens by Impact Atlas, but the purpose of it is not just to collect data for dashboards. It is so that you know long-term relationships can be formed with individuals and trainers have the information they need to serve those individuals as effectively as possible. Therefore, yes, on the hope that Innovista have relationships to span multiple years, then information can be collected from those individuals across multiple years. So yes, certainly the, the intention is data collection will, will be beyond 12 months. Um, and having spoken to some of Investor um, staff members around the world, certainly some of the areas we're asking about or sort of defining success, certainly will maybe take a couple of the, the chain, if you like. Um, I see. Thank and I just add to that, that I think, it, you know, the thing that we in Avista really, really want to push for is that long-term relationship with the leaders that we're training and to have that long-term mentoring and coaching and walking alongside. So we absolutely want to see the, um, the results of that over a long period of time. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Ruth asks, when are we uh, hoping to launch? And uh, we're, the hope is that uh, this month we will get our first uh, trainers uh, operating the system. Uh, that's probably going to be Sam in Ireland, who's going to be kind of our pioneer 
trainer to be on the system and start uh, getting people registered with the aim that uh, in October, then the rest of our uh, national teams will start uh, getting on the system. We're conscious that uh, our trainers have been working with a lot of people over time. So there, there will be a, there is a, in effect, a backlog of getting people onto the system, getting leaders registered into it. Uh, it will take us some time to do that. But yes, we're very much hoping that um, it will be this month that the, the first of those um, trainers will be working on the system. Uh, Melanie asks, if a pastor, for example, indicates that they need more help or training, will this initiate a follow-up? Um, yes, I think is the short answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, Phil, how, from your experience of using the, the platform, how can we make that um, a smooth process? I know we've talked about in some contexts, there'll probably be more automation, and in other contexts, it will be much more... Uh, person to person rather than automation yeah, yeah i think um as i said a few times i think the intention of impact atlas which is why it does mesh really well with investor is to facilitate relationships so i'll be really honest and say i don't off the top of my head i presume there would be the capacity for an automated you know flag against a, a leader on the system so you know innovator training logs in essentially they've got access to their portfolio you know of leaders that they are individually supporting in their country or their hub um, i'm sure there would be a way for that to flag automatically i think the intention would be that leader would sort of be wanting to see um you know that person or they've just completed their survey let me have a look at that survey the baseline survey and they've said they would really love a follow-up coaching session around this area and that trainer would then obviously take that initiative to get in touch with that person and, and set that up um so i, I would knowing in Ivista, i was imagining that would be as much relation as automated thank you phil that's a good answer um Ruth asks, do all leaders we train have smartphones to enable them to use the app? Um, the majority of use of the app will be by our trainers. Uh, di the direct use of the Impact Atlas platform will be by our trainers. Um, but they will, surveys will come to uh, leaders clearly to fill it out. Uh, and that will be either on smart, they can answer those on smartphone or on um or on computer we are conscious that or we we anticipate that in the contexts where there is less adoption of technology those are also the contexts where it's less likely that somebody would want to answer a survey on a phone they're much less familiar with that way of working and that's going to be much more interpersonal uh, in fact medina can you talk about maybe how you'd envisage this working for yourself or even um Andre, where he works. Sorry. Uh, um, for example, this time we just uh, hang and we didn't have a problem with uh, any electronic stuff. Uh, they had computers, so we just handed the test and they did test very well. So we didn't have problem. Thank you, uh, indeed. At least every leader has computer right now. Yeah. Excellent. That's good to know. But and do you, and do you think that there will be some times where actually you will be asking the question of a leader and and you will be filling out the survey because yes, of course, yeah. If there, it's like if it will be regions, and of course we will be copy out that they will be hanged and they will be reading this. They will be reading. And the, usually the, we were doing feedback like this. So, and then I, I just can feel for them, fill out for them, yeah, applications. So, yeah, usually they're reading and then I'm feeling. Thank you, Dina. Uh, Claire asked about uh, the, the data. Um, lots of data is being collected, but predominantly from the leaders themselves. And this uh, needs a certain level of self-awareness. 
will we also be collecting data on the impact from the leaders stakeholders for a more holistic assessment um in fact phil we we've talked to uh, we've been around this haven't we this yeah. has been part of our discussions around how we do this well uh could you speak to that for just a, a minute <laughs> yes um it's a great question claire i whenever you start working with these you know developing systems like this or any impact evaluation it's you, you never there's a tension between the practicalities of obviously all the data you would like to have to be as reliable and and robust as possible versus what is realistic to be collected i think because we did want to try and make it as honest and real as possible, as you say, relying on the self-awareness. That's why we did move towards this rather than a agree or disagree scale um, where it's very easy for someone to say, oh, it's just, that's just like me. You know, let me, let me put myself at the top of the scale. We, we chose to, which took, you know, a bit long, more time to come up with some of these specific behavioral scales where no system's ever gonna control a leader who has no self-awareness. Um, but I think, um, you know, as Medina shared as well, I think in certain contexts, there might be a more relational component components to this anyway, where, where um, if, a, if, a, if a leader is saying, absolutely, I, you know, me and my team always do this, and, and the trainer maybe either knows that's unlikely or unrealistic, then the innovative trainer can, you know, have that conversation and say, okay, you, that's what you think, tell me a little more about that. And therefore maybe they may come to a, a different awareness after the fact. Um, the second part we did build in, though, because we, we uh, the Jason, the CEO of Innovista, felt was quite important, is that we have already built in a one sort of, not really 360, but one external element for assessment of, of the of main leaders of organisations. So where they do have a team, their team is being asked similar questions about that main leader. So that was the, we could easily build that into a system without making it too, um, let's say data hungry. Um, but that's one thing we're adding in just so if there is a completely unaware main leader, it will come up pretty obviously that their team do not think they do all the things that they are saying they do. Mm. So is, um Phil shared that kind of diagram of the flow of a leader through the system. Um, at the very beginning, we will somebody will be set upon the system as either a main leader of an organisation or they are one of the other leaders. And, and there are specific questions. If somebody is one of the other leaders, there are specific questions um, to help them assess the, the main leader. And, and that's built in. Thank you, Phil. Um, and one more question. Are we able to uh, filter the data by geography, agenda, age and other diversity metrics? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Um, we will, as somebody comes into the system, they will be set up within a specific country um, and in fact, a specific hub within that country. So we will be able to slice the data by um, country or by hub equally. Um, we'll have gender and age um metrics in there um, we'll also be able to then slice it by specific inputs so we'll be able to pull out um all, let's see what's the impact of say one-off workshops versus long-term uh, coaching relationships and we'll be able to look at those differently and be able to hopefully in time quantify the difference how hopefully be able to demonstrate how long-term ongoing contact means that there are greater impacts than having the odd one off contact. Excellent. Um, it's uh, 10 to 3 in the UK. Um, the final call for a last question or we'll wrap up at that. I be, can I ask one more question? I'm really sorry. <laughs> I've had to prioritise my questions because I have loads, but I'm <laughs> just one more I'm very, really interested to, to know. So we've, um, you know, we're hearing so much at the moment that actually, you know, it's not down to hero leaders. It's not down to sort of a specific leader's individual qualities. You know, we live in such a complex, challenging world. It's all about radical collaboration and, and partnerships and, and, and things. So what, what I'm just curious about is when we're thinking about measuring impact and this seems quite sort of individual leader specific but but to what extent does the system help us to measure the relationships between leaders 
Um, I know we can look at hubs of leaders and we can perhaps build up a picture from looking at that, but I'm just wondering whether it will capture that. Do you know what I mean? It will measure the, the quality of relationships between these leaders, not just the, the work that the individual leader is doing. Does that make sense? It does. And I'm, I'm not sure that's something we quite have, will be able to capture in the, the version 1.0 of that. Um, certainly one of the things we're looking at specifically around those longer term coaching or mentoring relationships is there definitely being um, space for the, the the member of our team who is the coach or the mentor to to have uh, to fill out an evaluation that then can sit alongside the self-evaluation. Um, but uh, Phil, can I bring you in on that? How would you see that that as 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 we kind of envisage what a version two point might look like? Is that something? yeah? Mm. I mean, I think even even the version we have obviously being built at the moment, I it, it you know this is the strength of the process we choose to go through. It came out very strongly. I think partly what we were speaking to Claire that leaders need to have a you know where they have a team that the pod, the dynamics of that team are really important so there are a range of questions around behaviors and and experiences answered by the whole team on the experience of the team so that's one and the second one um partnership working came up a lot speaking in the vista team so asking leaders like are you partnering with other organizations both christian and in fact non-christian that was that was really important. So that's strongly in there as, as the cross, you know, again, cross-cultural question. So I think even, even in these first questions, there was clearly a, a, a desire to not have individual hero, you know, leader, as you say. Um, thank you, Phil. Excellent. Well, um, thank you all so much for uh, coming. Thank you for joining us. Um, for those who are listening to this as a recording, then uh, please get in touch with us at hello at innovista.com if you'd like any further information about what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for all those that have been with us in person. It's been great to see you and hear your questions. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, Mary, is there anything you want to say as a, a final wrap up? No? In that case, uh, thank you all so much. Yeah, for being just to correct that, it was innovista.org. Sorry. <laughs> I just put it in the chat. Tiny point. Yeah, just to say thank you, everyone. It's been really good to have you here. Thanks, Fiona. Great questions. Thank you.